The next stop will be on another case. This is a 20-year-old female who was involved in a high-speed motor vehicle accident. She was intubated prior to arrival, but grossly moving all extremities. There was no past medical history of significance. A CT scan of her cervical spine showed that there was dissociation between the occipital condyles and the lateral masses of C1, uh, diagnostic of an occipital dislocation. Uh, had axial images with a CTA. This suggested diextravasation uh, at the um, vertebral artery in the V3 distribution on the right. However, this was not appreciated preoperatively, and during dissection, we encountered a significant amount of blood that had to be tamponaded. The patient um, was then fixed temporarily with a C2 pedicle screw and an occipital plate and taken to angiogram where um, embolization of the V3 segment of the vertebral artery was performed. The patient was then brought back to the operating room two days later for definitive fixation of the occipital cervical spine, and she did uh, well after a recovery from her trauma uh, with a normal motor exam and uh, no evidence of intracranial infarct. There are several causes of vertebral artery injury, um, loss of surgical landmarks, an abnormal course of the vertebral artery, and then at C1 and C2, you have to consider the anatomy of the vertebral artery prior to placing fixation so as not to cause injury to the vertebral artery. The most common cause of or location for vertebral artery injury is in the V3 segment during transarticular screw fixation or C1 lateral mass C2 pedicle screw fixation. The second most common cause, though rare, is during uh, anterior cervical procedures in the V2 segment of the vertebral artery. Injury in the V1 and V4 segments are very rare. A survey um, from over 30 centers with 5,600 operations uh, showed that the incidence of vertebral artery injury was less than 0.2% in anterior cervical decompression and around 1.3% in posterior lentoaxial transarticular screw fixation. Inexperienced surgeons tend to cause more vertebral artery injury, and uh, vertebral artery injury in the screw hole was more easily controlled than vertebral artery injury in open space. Vertebral artery injury in the screw hole could be obtained by placing tamponade uh, with bone wax or screw insertion, whereas vertebral artery injury in the open space was difficult to control with tamponade and often required embolization. Preparative evaluation of the course of vertebral artery seemed to be the most important thing in preventing iatrogenic vertebral artery injury. A common cause of vertebral artery injury is loss of surgical landmarks. Um, it is important to orient towards the midline and to make sure we know where the course of the vertebral artery is before uh, embarking on an um, Using the microscope, one can scythe uh, off to the contralateral side and using a coarse drill, this is a common cause of vertebral artery injury from an anterior cervical approach. Um, it is also important to understand a course of an aberrant vertebral artery. Uh, most vertebral arteries enter the uh, foramen transversarum at C6. However, there's a 7% incidence of entering at other locations, and you should look for uh, evidence of the vertebral artery in the longus coli, as seen here in this image of an axial MR. Also, most of the time, you can perform lateral dissection out to the uncinate processes. However, there's a 2 to 3% incidence of vertebral arteries uh, coursing medial to the uncinate of CT and MR imaging, as seen here in the CT scan, where you can see the abnormal course of vertebral artery, and you can clearly see that this is medial, coursing medial to the uncinate process. Always check the MRI or CT scan preoperatively to make sure that you're not in a situation where the vertebral artery is coursing medially as it is here.
There are also C12 variants. Here's an evidence of a um, persistent first intersegmental artery un entering underneath the arch of C1 as seen on the CTA for a trauma patient. There are three types of variants which exist. A persistent first intersegmental artery, which can occur about 3% of the time. An extracranial um, origin of pica, which can occur approximately 1% of the time. And then fenestration of the vertebral artery, which can occur 0.9% uh, of the time. most common cause of vertebral artery injury was doing C12 fixation. This became evident uh, with the popularization of transarticular screws, as seen here in the schematic. Um, prior to placing transarticular screws, you must examine the sagittally reconstructed CT scan to make sure there is a pass up the isthmus of the pars of C2 into the lateral mass of C12 that is seen in the yellow arrow, but clearly on the red arrow, that would be very tight for placement of the screw and could cause injury to the vertebra. The anatomic suitability for C12 transarticular screws shows that about 20% of patients have an anomalous or high riding foramen transversarum in C2. And this was proven uh, in Chris Paramore's paper that is now almost 30 years old, or 17 out of 95. The same can be true also for C1 lateral mass screw insertion. Uh, this dissection has to be performed carefully so as not to injure the vertebral artery and the course of the vertebral artery in C2. You also must know alternatives to C2 screw placement. For instance, transarticular screws would be uh, in like C2 translaminar screws are a viable alternative when there's anomalous uh, vertebral artery in the anatomy. Another um, thing that has become uh, very well known is the ponticulus posticus, uh, which is due to complete or incomplete ossification. This is important because it is easy to mistake the broad ponticulus posticus for a widened posterior lateral arch of the atlas, and during dissection, you can imagine that you could get into the vertebral artery and cause significant damage. The normal C1 posterior arch thins out laterally, but a ponticulus posticus broadens laterally and should certainly be avoided and identified uh, so that vertebral artery injury is not occurred. Avoidance requires knowing the anatomy, especially abnormal anatomy of the vertebral artery. Take a look at the vertebral arteries on the axial MR and CT at the planned operative level, and if at risk, find and protect it. So what do we do if we get a vertebral artery injury? We need to expose and control the bleeding. You have to first tamponade the vessels. If using an anterior approach, you get a vertebral artery injury, you need to try to unroof the anterior frame and transversarum with a kerosene and use vessel loops and a right angle clamp to control this. Tamponade can be done with uh, pressure coagulation agents such as gel foam sponges or bone wax. To unroof the anterior arch and use vessel loops and right angle clamps to get the control. Let's finish up with another case. This is a 76-year-old woman with an unstable C1 fracture and persistent pain despite uh, bracing. At the time of surgery, there was no problem with the vertebral artery on initial drilling of the C1 lateral mass. But on tapping the C1 lateral mass, the torturous vertebral artery was seen to be injured by the tap. We went ahead and tamponaded this uh, vessel and then took the patient to angiogram where the left vertebral artery was occluded and we went ahead and performed uh, balloon embolization. The patient was neural intact, but when she mobilized, she became increasingly confused and this tight vertebral artery segment on the right vertebral artery origin was noted and this had to be stented.
This shows the importance of involving our endovascular colleagues to not only control the bleeding source, but also to analyze the posterior circulation of these patients. Summary, causes can be loss of surgical landmarks, abnormal anatomy, or lack of pre-op evaluation. You avoid um, vertebral artery injury by identifying the anatomy on CT or MR preoperatively and find and protect structures at risk. And management includes tamponade, exposure, ligate and repair, and then an endovascular consult. Thank you for your attention. 